What is up guys, it's your boy Swole, I'm here, back with another classic WoW Season of Discovery gold making video for you. Now, gold is looking to be way more important in Season of Discovery than I personally gave it credit for, and that's because of the, the inflation, you get a lot of gold at level 25, and also many of the items you need will be locked behind gold. Many of your base items are either BOE or crafted items, we need consumables, and gold is just simply looking to be very important. On top of that, you can secure 100 gold for your mount for phase 2, as well as 1000 gold for your epic mount in phase 4. So there are a lot of reasons to farm gold right now, and a lot of people are looking to farm gold, so I'm doing my best to keep you up to date with the gold farms that I personally found, and today I've been testing a couple of them. Now the best farm by far if you ask me is still going to be the BFD farm, and I made a video on this not that long ago, it's been a couple of days now, but the video's thumbnail looks like uh, not this one, this one right here, and you can find it on my channel, it is a very recent video. Now usually for that farm you want to wait 30 minutes, and basically you do one run, then you log out then you wait 30 minutes and you log back in and you just teleport to the to the entrance and you can keep farming one run per 30 minutes now we have found a way to actually circumvent this and do it as much as we want up to the instance cap of five per hour and i might share that in a future public video but once again that is going to be locked to the people that have my gold guide which there will be a further shout out for later at the end of this video but if you just want to have access to that one that is a 30 gold per hour farm right now at least on my server Living Flame EU if you have herbalism and mining on top. I'm making between 30 and 40, it depends a little bit on RNG but the absolute average is about 30 gold per hour, which is quite a lot at level 25 after all. So if you want to check it out and learn how to reset, it's in the guide or alternatively watch my streams, watch how I farm and then try to replicate to the best of your ability and see if you may make it work. Either way, that's the best farm. We also have this one right here which contains three separate farms. This one is insane for both gold and a rune, well separate runes, that you can get as well. It's tied to the quest that you get in Ratchet, where you have to hand in certain materials like fish oil for example, dark iron coordinates, and also shredder salvage units. Now all of those three farms are still really really good. The dark iron farms give you both dark iron ordinance and they also give you greens at the same time, and they can drop blues. The only thing is you're in a group so when greens and blues drop you have to roll for them, but other than that, it's a super chill and super nice farm. The Shredder farm still also gives me between 15 and 20 gold per hour, so that one is really good, but you have to be in Stone Talon, which is a big PvP zone. Now, other than that, I have been testing a couple of farms because once again, even though BFD is my favorite, and it's probably the best farm I have found so far, there's not everyone that has the ability or does want to do the raid, because to do BFD you have to do the raid, so I'm gonna try some farms in the open world and see how they compare. Now today on stream we tested about 3 of these farms and I want to share my results with you today on those farms, so let's get into it. So farm number one that I want to highlight in the open world, this is a cave farm and it's a combination farm. I really like combination farms where you can farm for more than just one thing because that way you can add up the gold per hour from farm 1 and farm 2 and you usually end up getting more gold than if you just farm for one singular item per farm. So for example from the murloc farm in wetlands you can have both fish oil and pearls and in the cave over here if you bring mining you will have both spider silk and mining veins. Now for the purpose of the gold per hour I was only doing mining here if you bring someone with better pulling abilities and a Druid. For example, if you're a hunter, mage, warlock, anyone who can pull multiple mobs or chain pull them back to back, you can farm a bunch of spiders at the same time and get a lot of spider silk while you're farming. Now in pure mining materials, the gold per hour from this farm turned out to be about 12 gold and I've written it on a document here. So I've gotten 12 gold in one hour, well 12 gold per hour, that is by selling everything, not converting anything, just farming for an hour, selling the straight up materials. Now by converting tin ore into bronze bars by buying copper ores and making copper bars, tin bars then bronze bars, I was able to make twice as much gold from my tin. The tin was 2.7 gold here which adds another 2.7 gold per hour which brings us to 15 gold per hour. That being said, all of the smelting does take time but if you just count the value of the materials and converting them to bars then that's 15 gold per hour from a pretty chill farm you're just like going in here 
and grabbing mining veins, and getting 15 gold per hour pretty simply, but in just raw materials it's 12 gold per hour, and once again that will vary depending on how much competition you have, if you're the only miner in here you will get way more, and then further using those bronze bar with the bronze bars with engineering, you can turn that even to into even more gold, make bronze settings, make basically anything needed, even the bronze wearing gizmos, right, you can make those as well, so by having the right professions you can turn this into even more gold, basically doing a shuffle, either way the farm itself about 12 gold, and where it's located is right here you can see in wetlands, you can see a bunch of the caves or the, the marks right here towards the middle at the cave in the middle of wetlands. That's basically where they're located, so it's a pretty simple farm to do, you just go into the cave, you loot absolutely everything, and one of the reasons why this works is that there's always going to be people in that cave. Now, it's, the cave is in the middle, but it's basically at the entrance down at the Dun Aligus, right? You will have the spider cave there. Now, once again, the reason why it works, and there's so many people here, is there is both a hunter and a warrior rune, so you will see both horde and alliance people enter the cave all the time, and they will clear the spiders for you, so all you have to do is get, get those mining veins if you're a mining character. Alternatively, it's better to kill the spiders as well at the same time, to utilize that downtime to get spider silk. But the mining veins, they spawn really quickly, and while making 12 gold per hour, I also got my mining skill from 135 to 150. So that's 15 skills, and I'm now max on mining. That's pretty nice. But 12 gold per hour, you have to evaluate if that's good or bad for you, and then go and farm if you want to. You can also use it while leveling up. It's a good farm to do to get gold while leveling from level 22 to level 25. Now then, onto another profession farm that I personally wanted to try out, and this one will be very, very niche because it's a druid farm. You really want to have aqua form for this one to move faster in the water, and then you're looking for strangle kelp. So once again, it's very niche on this one, but aqua form and strangle kelp, and you're hunting basically only for strangle kelp. It's a very chill farm, and even though it might look ineffective, ineffective, I'm gonna spoil it for you right now. We ended up making exactly 12 gold per hour, which was the same thing we made in the spider cave, and the spider cave might be more hectic, hectic, there's mobs there, there's people there, what I'm doing right now there's absolutely no one here, even though this video might change that, cause I was literally all by myself, and where I'm farming is in the hinterlands, and it was actually easy to get here, I'll go through the entire step if anyone wants to try it, and it's located on the shore, you want to be on the shore, the thing is it's a level 50 zone, for high 40s to 50s, there's level 50 mobs around you, but they're all neutral, so you will never be attacked by virtually anything while swimming up and down, and once again being a druid form you can swim up and down very very fast in aqua form right here. So what I did to get myself to this place, instead of walking through the hinterlands which is an absolute death sentence, go to the bridge up between wetlands and uh, Arathi highlands, and jump off the bridge and swim all the way around. It's a 5 minute swim, and you get right to where you want to be. Super easy farm, and once again exactly 12 gold per hour, based on the value of strangled cows being 12 silver each. So if they're more than 12 silver for you, go and farm more of them, uh, they're even gonna be even better for you. And the thing is, strangled caps will be going up and down in price with inflation, and based on supply versus demand, so I think they will be going up in price even more, in which case this farm will definitely be worth doing, so just keep it in mind, see how the price of strangled kelp moves, and if it's something you want to farm, keep this one in mind, almost nobody's doing it. And while we are talking about niche farms, and being a druid with aqua form, and doing strangle kelp, there is one more location worth noting here, and that is the shell shellfish trap in Desolus. And I'll just go through this as well really quickly on Wowhead. You can see in Wow in Desolus, and in the northern, uh, north really, southwestern part, you will have a bunch of marks for shellfish traps. There are high level mobs here, you want to be aware of that, but that is where being a druid with aqua form helps. You can gather one of these and then swim away fast, and you can reset the mobs usually. You can swim fast faster than they swim, and that really helps out. So once again, you can farm these traps, and there's a bunch of uh, strangled kelp in the same area, so you're hitting two birds, one stone. You're farming both shellfish traps and strangled kelps, but why would you farm here in the southwestern part of Desolus? Well, 
these guys right here, the shellfish traps, they can give you the big iron fishing pole, which increases fishing by plus 20, and I do believe this one is actually required to fish in Tanaris, and when you have it, you can fish in Tanaris, and get those fishing wreckages, or wreckage pools, right, to fish up some big boy gold, and on my server, this fishing pole is selling for 20 gold, I know on some other servers it's selling for 50 gold, so keep that in mind, really really expensive item, it only has a 1.2% drop chance from the traps but you do have a lot of traps sometimes you get three traps very close to each other so really good and once again a very good combo farm specifically for druid with aqua form that way you can both get the shellfish traps and strangle kelp at the same time now then, for the last farm that I wanted to try for today is Duskwood, and I believe most of you might know why I'm going here, but it's at the graveyard. I've marked Moladim because you do want to be aware of Moladim, and you are you want to be here mainly as an herbalist. The reason for that is Grave Moss. Grave Moss is selling like absolute hotcakes right now. They're selling for between 50 and 70 silver each. On my server, you can proc 3 of them in one loot, so 70 silver th times 3, that is 2.1 gold. Now, the prices fluctuate, I do think they're about 60 silver today, and they spawn all over the place over here. So here are the spawn locations in Duskwood, and if I just make this bigger, you can see right here, they're spawning all around here in Duskwood, in like the graveyard at Raven Hill, right? So they have several spawn locations in Raven Hill, so just run run laps around the entire place and look for them. Usually what I do here is you kill, tur you kill uh, skeletons in between, so you kill skeletons, take a lap, kill skeletons, take a lap, and then kill skeletons again. That way you are utilizing the downtime of uh, not getting any grave moss by getting some loot from the skeletons. They can even drop BOEs, both greens and blues, so utilize that downtime while still running laps to check for grave moss. This one is even better if you're able to farm later at night or early in the morning, when you will have way less competition. The less competition you have, the more grave moss you get, and the entire gold farm is based on grave moss, so giving a gold per hour here is going to be absolutely impossible because it really depends on competition, luck, RNG, and also if you're getting one or three grave moss per pickup, right? So very hard to say, but grave moss is really really expensive and everyone wants them right now. So it's a really solid farm, but once again, you don't really have that many places to farm, right? You have Duskwood, you have Desolus, but Desolus is a very high level area, but one other farm could be to run laps in the Kodo graveyard, but once again there are some high levels there. You also have one in Wetlands, if you go all the way up here to the crypt, there are some grave moss around there as well, but it's heavily farmed, just like Duskwood. So, grave moss, super good for gold, very bad because it's very competitive. <laughs> so you need to have 120 herbalism to pick these up. Once again, all of these farms do look to give you between 12 and 20 gold per hour. I do believe that if you go to Desolus as a druid and you do farm strangle kelp, plus the shellfish traps, that can be very decent. But if you do BFD right now, I'm still making 30 gold per hour in BFD myself, but that also once again requires you to have herbalism and mining and also farm those clams. If you really want to min max here, you also want to be a rogue, that way you can open locked chests, because there's two chest spawns inside, and they can both be locked, like the one right here is locked right now, so I can't even loot that one, and a friend of mine received Feet of the Lynx from a locked chest, that is 40 gold from one chest at the current price, right? So once again, that is my favorite farm, and if you do want to know how to reset the farm, we do have a trick to infinitely reset that in my gold guide, link down below, and I'll be using the end of this video to talk a little bit more about that guide. This is a full-fledged guide made for every version of Classic WoW. It was made for Classic Era, and updated for Hardcore, and we're also talking about it now with Seasonal Discovery. It's the same guide, but I'm updating how I'm making gold in a Discord server that you get access to when you have this guide. Starting this week, I will also be working on investments for Seasonal Discovery, and I'll be revealing those on that Discord server first and giving you early access. So, investments is how I personally make most of my gold, both in Classic WoW, Hardcore, and Wrath. I have made so much gold with investments. Even back in Classic WoW 2019, we had some banger investments back then, and we'll be repeating that this time around as well. So, my investments videos will be early access to anyone who has this 
Pages Guide. It's a one-time purchase, so you're getting a 134 pages document full of gold farms you can use in Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3, every single phase of the Seasonal Discovery, plus you're getting updates as well, plus early access, right? All of that in one product, plus you're supporting me at the same time, allowing me to take more time off to make content like this, and stream the game and level more alts. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below. If you are interested in making gold, please consider checking out the gold guide. I've spent a lot of time developing this, and I'm sure you will enjoy it. Either way, that's the video I have for you today. I just wanted to talk more about gold farming and compare BFD to open world farms. So yeah, that took some time on stream today, but we really had fun. Even though we made less gold, we got to try something. I'm currently leveling a hunter to try some hunter specific farms, and if you're playing a hunter, you might know what I'm talking about. Those should be coming out very soon. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed the video today. A bit of a long one, but hey, thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon.